Hi everyone and welcome to our presentation. Uh, we are presenting on Online Learning Partners, uh, which is a peer support peer program through the COVID-19 pandemic. We would just like to start by doing a land acknowledgement. So Nipissing University sits on the territory of the Nipissing First Nation and the territory of the Anishinaabeg within lands protected by the Robinson Huron Treaty of 1850. We are grateful to be able to live and learn on these lands with all of our relations. So a quick overview of our agenda, we'll be introducing ourselves firstly, um, and then talking about the creation of the OLP program. Uh, next then, we'll be talking about current tasks of what we're working on this year and how to start an OLP, an OLP program at your school as well. Hi, I'm Katherine Schefter. Um, my program at Nipissing is Child and Family Studies, um, Concurrent Education, with a minor in English, and I am in my fourth year currently. Hello, my name is Britta McBride. My pronouns are she, her, and I am a first year PhD student in the Educational Sustainability Program at Nipissing University. And my name is Charlotte Foster. My pronouns are she and her. I am currently doing my first year of my Bachelor of Education, and I did a previous undergrad at Nipissing University in a double major of Psychology and History. So I'm going to be talking about the creation of OLP from last year. So, when the Online Learning Partner Program was first created, the main idea was to provide students with peer-to-peer -peer support for all students facing the challenges of online school for the first time. The team consisted of myself and three other students from last year, and an email account was created that all OLPs had access to. We took turns looking out for incoming emails from students needing support from us. We ran typical business hours from Monday to Friday from 9 to 5 p.m., and we rotated days that we would be responsible for the email account and responding to students. As well, if we felt like a separate OLP could help that student better based on the program that the OLP was in or any other factors like that, we could contact one another to discuss what the student was looking for and work together to help that student in the best way possible. So last year's tasks included many things. Students could contact us throughout the school year, and the main thing was for su virtual support for things such as help with Blackboard, which is our school's course shell. We could help organize their school schedules while they navigated the new online school world, or just help them find the right person to contact for their problems. Students could also meet with an OLP virtually to receive the help they needed in a one-on-one -on -one meeting. I think OLPs provided lots of benefits last year to incoming students, because as a student, it can be quite daunting and scary to help with school or ask questions to faculty when you don't know them fully yet. OLPs provided students that have been at Nipissing already and brand new students with a resource that allowed them to reach out to fellow students, which could provide them with some ease and make a brand new school a little less daunting. Last year, OLPs also helped in the creation of the OLP website. The website was created under the Teaching Hub at Nipissing University to help students find us easier and give them a brief idea about what the Online Learning Partner Program was about. Also, the website contained a picture of each of the OLPs and a little bio about the OLP so that the students could put a face to the virtual helper they might be talking to. The OLPs gave their ideas and opinions about how the website should look or what we thought would be helpful to have on the website, such as an FAQ section about common questions we heard about Blackboard. As well, prior to the start of the school term last year, we held a few Blackboard information sessions for students to attend, which taught them how to use Blackboard and any helpful tips they might need. We took them through an example course so they could see what their courses would look like when classes started up. We showed them where professors could post lectures, how to access tests and assignments, and how to view your grades throughout the semester. As well, we took the students through the discussion boards and announcements page on Blackboard in case they needed to use theirs in their classes. I believe that the information sessions was a big success just due to the helpfulness of the session. Online class is a very different idea for a student. It can be hard to get used to the online platform while navigating brand new classes. These sessions allowed for students to learn about Blackboard and possibly help students feel more comfortable and confident when classes started. As an orientation leader at Nipissing in the summertime, I know that many students do have questions about Blackboard or how to access their courses and content. So an information session like this is a very good idea to implement at your school and it provides a lot of helpful tips to students that I think that students appreciate.
Finally, last year, we reviewed some online tech tools that could help with education. Some examples included tools like PeerGrade, Microsoft Sway, and Padlet. These tools can assist students and faculty in education, so we took a look at each of these tools and outlined some possible uses for school. For example, last year, I took a look at an online tool called Walklet. This resource allows you to save and organize content from any website. You create a collection first and title it, and then you can save anything like a YouTube video, a PDF, website link, and more to the collection. This tool could be used for research projects at school because it saves all of your resources in one location, and then you can even turn that collection into a project that can be presented by adding text and other information that you want in your project. OLPs could then relay tools such as Walklet to students reaching out or faculty as possible ideas for presentations, lectures, or projects. As well, there were possible tools that we could give to students to help them organize their school schedules and deadlines. Overall, the Online Learning Partner Program is a great thing to have at Nipissing and it provided a lot of benefits for the school last year. It's an extra resource for students to use and receive help through the program. Peer-to-peer -peer support is a great resource for students because they can reach out to a person that is close to their age and went through the same thing that they did while at school. OLPs know what helped them in their years at Nipissing and they can pass off those tips to other students. Online learning partners have a variety of tasks that allow them to support and collaborate with students and staff at our own university and also to collaborate with peers from other in Ontario institutions. The main task of the online learning partners is to provide peer-to-peer -peer support on topics related to online learning. This could involve answering questions over email, instructing students how to navigate Blackboard Learn, meeting with students virtually to demonstrate how to perform tasks related to the technologies, or even providing suggestions about different technologies and programs that can be used to complete assignments. Online learning partners help produce and present webinar content aimed at helping staff, faculty, and students navigate online learning. I recently helped to present a webinar on how to foster engagement and inclusivity in online learning spaces. Aside from providing virtual support to the Nipissing University community, online learning partners get the opportunity to participate in research and education projects that the Teaching Hub is involved in. One project we are currently working on is a multi-university research project investigating equity in learning during the COVID-19 pandemic. The online learning partners have contributed to the project through reading archived university messaging related to COVID, coding, and creating a spreadsheet of the research relevant to our own institution. We attend regular virtual meetings to collaborate with representatives from the other institutions involved in the project. We are also contributing to another multi-university collaborative project aimed at helping students navigate the university experience and problems that are common to students. Our role has been to read through anecdotal stories from students and attempt to recommend activities that students could access to help them solve the issue. Online learning partners provide um, and develop skills essential to sustainable education. The pro program provides us an opportunity for us to tailor our tasks to our skill sets or towards skills that we hope to develop. For example, as a PhD student, I get to work on tasks involving research and presentation. We also have the opportunity to learn about new educational technologies and knowledge share across campus. Working on multi-university, university, multidisciplinary projects creates the opportunity for us to network and form connections with those at other institutions. Ultimately, we get to bring our student voices and feedback to the development of different projects which is essential to keep the projects informed for relevancy and to ensure the messages are landing with their target audiences. All right, and I will be talking about how to start an OLP program at your institution if you are interested. Um, so it's a program that has always been around and like has always been needed, but during the pandemic has been heightened, um, this need for peer-to-peer -peer support. And so now it's a perfect time to start if you were ever questioning it before. Um, most students, especially first year students, feel more comfortable reaching out to peers rather than faculty members for support. I remember when I first entered university, I reached out to my older sister for support even though she wasn't even at my institution, um, which just kind of shows that they're more comfortable reaching out to their peers rather than faculty in office hours and such. The pandemic has heightened the need for these peer-to-peer -peer supports as most folks are feeling isolated, online learning um, by themselves and not actually 
interacting with other classmates where they could ask those questions in a classroom setting. So this need is going beyond the pandemic because a lot of the classes are still running in a hybrid model or online classes as um, an appealing option for students as well. So more reasons why to start this program at your institution. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer support is critical for student development. It builds those social connections that students need to help them learn and to navigate life as a university student. Uh, it allows for equitable online supports for students, so it allows others to reach out for supports for online so they can have the similar classroom experience for all. Um, often, and even at smaller institutions like Nipissing, there is a space for programs like this as it relies mostly on student support. And the program also gets students involved and creates student jobs, which benefits all. So how to start the program? <laughs> there is a lot of funding at the provincial level for, uh, for programs like this. Um, so many institutions can apply for those programmings, which will help fund uh, student salaries or student um, payment and getting the job rolling basically with some funding. Uh, so apply for those. <laughs> You would also want to narrow your search to include upper year students, ideally those with experience with online learning, which is now all of the upper year students um, at your institutions, and also some knowledge of your in, uh, services that your institution provides. Most of the time students will come to whatever email they can find and asking for supports and if that is not a support that it would be best utilized with your student um, employees, then having that knowledge of a service that they can then afford them to is a great thing to have so students don't feel like they're left out in the dark. And it's also important to include students from a variety of programs. Having students from a variety of programs ensures the best student support for all students. Uh, so if I had an education student ask a question about an um, education class, that would probably be best answered by me because I have experience in that classroom. Then you would also want to provide an orientation for your new student leaders. Uh, so you would want to review online support, so for Nipissing, um, reviewing Blackboard and how to use it. Um, brainstorming potential student questions and how to respond professionally. Many times for a lot of um, university students, this is their first time taking in a professional role um, and writing emails can be a little daunting for new staff, especially if they don't know what the formal tone is, especially when speaking to another peer. Um, so finding that fine line between professional but also a peer-to-peer -peer relationship. Um, and also get to know their interest in this brainstorming or orientation session. Um, this will help when dividing up tasks. So for Britta, who is our PhD student, she's obviously very invested in research. So knowing that information, Britta has been able to take on a lot of the research related tasks. So then you would want to brainstorm as a team support programs that students might enjoy. So as mentioned last year, they did the Blackboard orientation because that's what the OLPs, the students, felt other students needed. Uh, this could also include book clubs to help support um, social interaction and how to access various online resources might also be another good way to start. And then obviously you have this great program with great supports and so now it's time to get the word out to the students so they can um, have the benefits of this program. Um, a great way to do this is to build partnerships with your student unions to advertise your events and your services. Uh, they have direct um, access to a lot of the students and also when they share stuff on their social media pages, a lot of students will follow their student unions um, for updates and so it's a great way to directly advertise to that audience. Building partnerships with other offices in your student development services to help share your services. As much as it was important for us as student le leaders to know other services to help forward them, or help forward students to those services, it's important for other services to do the same for you. Um, and ask your institution's communications department to share posts of your events or your website um, to let students know that these new supports are available to them. Also having consistent communication with your student leaders or partners to notice any student trends and to brainstorm potential projects to help students support other students. Uh, so this is important for if you're wanting to create a new event, you can reach out to your student leaders and say what are some trends that you're noticing, 
a lot of the times it's around this season, it's now midterms and how to write a test. Um, so you can start brainstorming potential projects to help um, students feel supported by their peers. So these are all building blocks on how to build a program. Um, you might need to tailor these uh, suggestions to your institution's needs. Um, if, like for example, if you have multiple student unions trying to see which one you want to partner with um, because it can be hard to build a lot of partnerships all at once. So it is important for you to tailor these suggestions to what your institution is like. Um, and for that, that's a lot of getting student feedback as well. So the core pillar of this progr program is to listen and invite student voices into the space. This is peer for it to, or key for it to remain as a peer-to-peer -peer support, um, and also programs that students want rather than what faculty think students need. Thank you for listening to our presentation, and if you would like to connect with us later on, feel free to reach out to us.